What's up guys, it's your boy Abe coming to you from Life by Abe. Talking with my homie Winning Without Borders, which is right here. What is up guys? And uh, we're coming to you today talking about things that we enjoy in living about living in Saigon. Uh, don't mind the motorbikes in the background, they're just racing. It's great to empty. Uh, that's one of the things I like is how free you are. Oh, they're getting chased by a cop! No. Yeah! Really? Yeah! <laughs> That's hilarious. That is! So if you guys are ever in Vietnam and you're driving a motorbike and you get stopped by a cop, yeah, there's a potential you could like pay them and they'll let you go. But just a couple months ago, Vietnam, they uh, actually um, you know, put into effect a new law that uh, is actually um, pretty strict now. So like you sometimes can't get away from cops like uh, back, back in the day. Yeah, if you are living here and you're wondering how you can get a license, I'm gonna link my video up top and you go to that and follow the instructions. You get a license in a few weeks to a month. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've been living here for a year and a half. I do not have a license, so I'm pretty, I'm doing illegal things right now. And if I do get caught by the cops, then, you know, it's my fault at the end of the day and, you know, I'll face, um, you know, the penalties that they would give to me. I, on the other hand, got my license and I'm legal here, so. But, does he have insurance? It's 80000 for the year. I just need to find a broker. Well, I know somebody for that. There you I go. Can, I can give you the information, information. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And then I'll post a video about it. Maybe. Yeah. Alright, so we're talking about, like, standard of living here. Uh, I actually think the standard of living is quite high. Okay. For the amount of money that you would spend, as opposed to America. Um, the apartment I'm living in right now, I had that in San Diego, easily be twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a month, yep. plus paying my utilities on top of that. Yep. And then I, I wouldn't have anyone to actually like clean my apartment, it's a yep. service department, or do my laundry. Yep. So that would be another fifteen hundred dollars on top of that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I heard like when you get a service apartment, then everything is included. You know, yeah. Like you get a maid, and they just come and they clean like every few days. So uh, that's pretty nice. You know, like I can never afford. I don't think we can ever afford a maid back home unless like we're like filthy rich. You know, but, or we had three people living in a yeah, definitely, house. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's pretty cool. The maid here, you can actually uh, go on an app and you can you know get them to come over your house and clean up. Uh, you can also like ask the locals, and they'll even recommend you a maid who can cook. So that, that's a that's a bonus right there. I don't need that. I like to cook, so I would probably rarely ever do that. Plus, food here is But do you cook Vietnamese food? You know what? I might not be able to, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, speaking of food, we actually just had an amazing chicken and rice plate. I'll post a picture here. Alright, that was delicious. It was what? They came up to total. Oh. Four dollars? Yeah, not even. It was like, like three. thirty-five. I think thirty-five k, which is about a dollar and twenty twenty cents for a plate of uh, like a drumstick of chicken. You get like vegetables on the side and rice as well. So uh, and, and a bowl of soup. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I feel like you can eat out here every day if you eat locally. I mean, you'll never like damage like damage your wallet or anything. Yeah, less like a dollar a meal. So that was that was delicious. Um, and then, you know, other than that, the nightlife here is also great, um, as you found out <laughs> recently. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys have never uh, been to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, or Vietnam in general, like the club scene is not what you would expect. When you get in there, there's going to be tables, and um, you know, usually people, you'll see them with like hookah, with like um, food, and, and fruit on the, on the table as well. Balloons. Uh, balloons, and you know, um, they don't really dance and there's not a lot of room to dance. But uh, there are a couple places in Ho Chi Minh City that actually has a legit uh, nightclub, like the ones you can see in maybe Las Vegas or even Chicago, because we have great nightlife there. But it was strange to me at first, but you know, sometimes when I'm drinking too many shots, you know, I kind of want to gag, but just knowing that there's like a platter of fruit right there, you know, it, it does wonders. <laughs> yeah. Um, and. You can spend hours, there's really no curfew, so some places might be open all night, and well into the morning. So if you're looking to party, you can do that here at any point of the day or night. Um, mainly during the night though, during the yeah. day, mm -hmm. there's not really a day drinking culture here. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing too, you know, about the standard of living is 
things are very different from where we come from. Like we're from both of us are from America. Um, just even the traffic alone, uh, you can spend hours just trying to figure out the traffic patterns, and still something's gonna surprise you. You'd be here for years, and something will pop up and surprise you. Uh, and I wouldn't say the lawlessness of it, but just the creativity that comes with like traveling and just doing anything here is something to Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna say about the standard here. Uh, and then fresh fruit, fresh veggies, everywhere you look. Uh, what you pay $15 for for a salad back home, you can get here for just a couple of bucks. So it's super healthy living. I've lost a ton of weight moving here. I actually need to go shopping for new clothes because everything's not fitting anymore. But that's it. Yeah, and uh, with uh, you know, the, uh, speaking of living, uh, when we talk about like uh, markets and all that, I think Vietnam is a very convenient place to live. I mean, uh, you can just uh, leave your home and just walk a couple of feet, and there'll be like a street vendor that's selling food, like uh, you know, steamed rice plates or like, noodle dishes. And if you want to go to a market, that's probably a couple more feet away. So everything is within reach. Uh, in Chicago, I know, like if I want to go to the grocery store, I would get in my car and drive like five or ten minutes. But if I was walking, that probably take a good hour to go there and back. So the convenience is uh, definitely a perk living in Ho Chi Minh City. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, whatever you need is right around the corner. And the best part is, if you ever need a caffeine fix, you know, just walk 15 feet. There's another cafe. Um, and there are hundreds of cafes in a single block here. Just like there are like dozens of schools and uh, just, uh, so many things that uh, the city has to offer. Oh yeah, I've been living here for about six months and I want to say I've explored maybe a tenth of a percent of what Saigon has to offer. Um, every street has something different going down, going on, and even the streets that you would think would be seemingly boring, there's actually a lot going on in there if you just take the time and stop it. Yeah, so I definitely uh, would tell you guys if you are coming here to visit or if you're living here for you know short term or long term, um, I definitely suggest you to live in like District 1, District 3, or District 4. Please avoid, this is my opinion, please avoid Taodian. It's like the expat area and we always feel like people never leave their bubble. So if you guys want to, you know, uh, get a sense of how life really is in Vietnam, definitely uh, live in those uh, surrounding areas. And for those of you that have no clue about what we're talking about, about the districts, I'm going to include a district map here. Alright, so we came to a new location. We're here in Sala Park, which you guys can check it out. It's pretty sick looking. And that kind of brings us to piggyback off of the like standard of living. Uh, these apartments are super nice. Um, something comparable to this back in the States would probably be like two to three grand for one bedroom or maybe even a two bedroom. Whereas here, I was looking at two bedrooms for right around 800 US. Uh, so like to live in this area, it's super well manicured. There's actually a lake like right here, stocked filled with fish. No one's fishing because it's that nice of an area. Uh, but I think that's something. Like, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, so let's go back to the, uh, you know, when I was mentioning my apartment in District 7, I paid like around 580 per month, and that apartment was built like only a couple years ago, and everything is uh, fresh, it's modern, um, you know, nothing is, the wall is not peeling. So, like, uh, the quality of the apartments you get here is like, you, you really do get a bang of your buck. Because oh, right? yeah. back home in America, let's say, if I had an apartment like that, you know, my walls are peeling, you know, I have an old refrigerator, an old stove, you know. Uh, the heater might not be working and I'm paying about the same price, you know, uh, as in Vietnam. So it, it's uh, mind-blowing to know that um, for 580 you know, you can get like a fresh new apartment. Yeah, and I'm living in a place that I'm the first person in there and I'm not paying 580 I'm paying 430 and I'll link the video up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's super chill. Like, I'm enjoying myself here way more and it's not just because of the cost. Like. Living here is just amazing. The people are friendly. While some of the things they do may come off as rude, mm -hmm. but there's it's just the way things are done here. Yeah, yeah. So just going off that, like say if you're in a restaurant and in a local restaurant and you finish your meal and you want to get a check, uh, 
in Vietnam, people would just holler across the dining room. And uh, if you first come here, you would assume, man, people are disrespectful here. But I just want you guys to understand the system is different here. It's rude back home, but it's not rude in Vietnam. It's just a system that they got going and it works for them. So uh, I just want you guys to remember that when you come to Vietnam next time. Yeah. Um, the other thing, like, we both worked in restaurants before. Uh, and yeah, yelling at your waiter for us is a little out there, but here they won't come to you unless you call yeah. them. Mm -hmm. um, like you really do have to call them to, for them to come over. Um, and then the other thing too is when they when they take your order, when you sit down, they stand there until you order. So they want you to look at the menu in five seconds, make your decision, and then and then go, and then they'll just leave you alone for the rest of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't uh, to add on to that. Don't feel like you're being rushed. That's just the way it is. Uh, in their minds, this is that that is good customer service. In our minds, it's kind of like you know, give me some time to chill out, give me some room to look over the options. But um, don't feel like you're rushed. Yeah. Uh, in America, if someone's doing that, then yeah, it's a different story. But once again, it's totally different here. Yeah. They also. I'm a black dude and I'm used to people following me, but here they will follow you in the store, but it's not because they think that you're stealing. It's so much, yeah. it's, that's their service standard. Mm -hmm. That's the way they do it. So you'll go to a grocery store, for instance, like a, a any like high-end grocery store and somebody will follow you around. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions, they're right there to answer it for you. If you need something price checked or if you want something in a different flavor, they, and they know where it is, you can just ask them. Yeah, and to add on to that, um, personal space here is not a thing uh, people will be up in your business and uh, you know after the first few times of course it's gonna be awkward and you know uh, you kind of wonder why are you doing this but uh, customer service is important don't think it's not it's just done differently yeah yeah um, anything else on while we're here like mm, nothing else to add um, I've got something that's a giant flower that lights up at night it's, it's called pretty sick. the lotus flower the national flower of Vietnam yeah and, and I, I, I'm if I'm not right I'm not Vietnamese at all yeah <laughs> I'm a fake Vietnamese but this area is actually very nice um, I'm looking at an apartment right now right down the street from here that's even cheaper than the one I'm in now and uh, I'm hoping that it, it is super chill so yeah. I'll be spending a lot of time at this park if I move in down the street all right we'll see you guys on the next topic okay. Alright guys, so, uh, so we are about to head out of this park uh, and we just want to talk about the characteristics from this park compared to a park back home in the US. So hey, do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, uh, this park has a lot going on. Um, they've got a jump arena, they have an amusement park inside of just a regular park. Uh, there's some guys throwing some metal balls in the back that looks kind of like horseshoes. Yeah, almost. It, it, initially I said that it looked like a shuffleboard on dirt as they were trying to get the balls out of the you know the area where they were throwing it at. Uh, but I've never seen that before. Uh, something new, and uh, so I don't have much information about that specific activity. But um, I'll show you the video right now. to go to hang out with friends um, or just socialize with people in your age range. There's kids playing soccer behind their camera right now. Um, there's guys fishing over there with their family, catching dinner maybe. Um, there's, like I said, an amusement park, there's places, there's couples all around, snuggled up, you know, doing the lovey-dovey thing. This place is awesome. Uh, back home to find a park like this would be very rare, yeah. And most of the activities here are free. It's just bring your own equipment, do whatever you want. So that's huge. And there's no admission into the park. We paid five thousand for parking, which is like nickel. Yeah. So for uh, quarter, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And you can park here all day. Um, there's a pool that you can go to, there's a playground, there's just so much going on. In my video, you probably hear some background music. There's the jump arena is playing music. They're playing Christmas music. Like two seconds ago. But 
it's cool. Everyone's hanging out. Everyone's having a good time uh, and smiling and just happy. Yeah. All in all, um, you know, this is a far from basic park. You know, in the U.S. we have parks. Uh, and it has like a kids playground, it has like a dog park, yeah, maybe a swimming pool, tennis court, but here like um, it has a, a lot of variety, you know, like uh, Abe mentioned before, it, has, it even has a roller coaster, a jump arena, uh, like a food court, they even have a market where you can buy clothing and other accessories. So. not lacking anything here so uh, if you guys ever come by here definitely check it out I'll definitely put the link uh, to the location uh, in the description for you guys Let me tell you guys, I am absolutely exhausted. Last night I got no sleep at all. I slept at 6 a.m. for like three or four hours. I woke up and I just felt like total crap. But I am so glad that uh, we got uh, a lot of shooting done today. And I think that we are drinking a well-deserved beer. So uh, with that being said, the next thing that I would like to talk about is um, the ability to travel anywhere. Uh, the fourth, so yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do that again. Let's cut that part. <laughs> um, so I think uh, the fourth thing that I really like about living in Vietnam, I think Abe will agree, is the ability to travel anywhere you want in Southeast Asia. Maybe um, not so much the ability, but the ease. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that ease is, uh, that we have to travel practically anywhere we want in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why I picked Ho Chi Minh City is I call it home base you know like if you want to take a trip to like Thailand to Malaysia you know it's within an hour or three hours and uh, it's so like it, it, it doesn't take too long versus like flying from Chicago or from Florida to Vietnam which takes a whole day you yeah. know um, so I, once you once you're here like the flights are 100 bucks maybe to go to another country yeah. like round trip with luggage it's pretty, that's that's just ridiculous like, yeah and uh, to add on to that like in America you know everything was just so far out of reach and every trip that I was thinking of it was only a dream but like while living in Vietnam any trip that I'm thinking about going on it can turn into a reality with a snap of your fingers you know like tickets around 30 to 40 dollars to multiple cities in Vietnam if you want to go to Thailand it's like around a hundred bucks uh, if you want to go to China or Korea it's around 150 to 200 so uh, it doesn't cost too much to fly to a different country yeah I think my flight from Japan to come here was like 200 bucks and that was with copious amounts of luggage and just yeah um, and it just makes life so much easier to be able to pick up and move uh, and like travel to different places. Um, Bali, I'd love to go to Bali because you can see like all the beautiful pictures and everything. Yeah. You know, a round trip flight from here takes like hundred and twenty dollars in yeah, yeah. season. Mm -hmm. um, then you can get like a dope place to stay for a couple bucks a night too. Eat some food, walk around, see some stuff, and then um, you know head back. Um, and that ties in with the time off that we have. It's yep. really easy, like, as English teachers, if we want to take a day off, you know, it's kind of like, hey, yeah, you want to cover? Yeah, sure, it's coming on the next one, and you're yep. good. So. Yeah, so um, so he worked at he works at Apex. I work, I used to work at a small academic center, and like I had the ability to take a lot of time off. And uh, sometimes I would take you know a Friday off or a Monday off just to have like that four day weekend to travel to a place like Thailand or Malaysia. I did Malaysia in, in four days, and that was just enough to you know to see all the um, you know just uh, attractions and whatnot. And you know when I came back, I I, I still felt great because uh, you know I still had money in my pocket and I didn't feel broke but you know it's different going from America to Vietnam and back and you like uh, you know spend a lot of money oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah but I mean at the same time like people can do it in America we make enough money yeah. to where like 
you can do it. It's just that some of our habits, I think, are bad. Like, we like to go drinking a lot. Yeah. You know? Uh, or we'll buy the new shiny iPhone, where that could pay for your round trip ticket and probably a couple nights of hotel uh, to travel. You know? Hey, you got the, the iPhone 9. Yeah. You don't need the 11. Leave it yeah. alone. Take that money that you're going to put towards that and put it towards something nicer, like a trip somewhere, something that's actually going to benefit your life. Yeah, so a lot of people, like, um, they, they're, they're always asking me questions like, Kenny, how do you do it? How do you get to travel to, you know, so many uh, wonderful places? And I'm just like, I just save up, you know? Like, you, for me, I know what my pri priorities are, and it's not getting the latest iPhone. Heck, I, this phone, I think it's the iPhone 6. I've had it for three years, and it's, when it breaks, you know, I'll get a new one. But other than that, it's still a good working condition. Oh, yeah. So it definitely, um, you know, you have to um, uh, just lay out, you know, a list of what your pri priorities are. And, um, you know, you can't make it happen. Just like I bought my phone, uh, the phone that I'm actually filming on right now. Uh, I bought that this year, but it wasn't something that I didn't need. Um, I needed the phone. My old phone stopped working, and so I was like, I'm job hunting at the moment. I need a way for people to contact me. So I bought my phone. It cost me like $260 for a brand new phone. I didn't go for the top of the line. I had the money in my pocket. I could have, but I decided, no, nah, I'm good. This one does everything I need to, and, and I'm happy with it. My old phone was a Samsung S6. This thing is so old. But, you know, it still works. Yeah, up until the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say? No, I think that's it. I think uh, we're going to get out of your hair. You're going to get out of our hair. And, well, my lack of hair. Um, we're going to enjoy some dinner. And...